Now let's talk about a variant of that previous vulnerability which was found in the wild a bit later. So Google said that they found a new vulnerability being exploited in the wild in August of 2021, and this was given this new CVE 3086.9. So in their write-up, it said, this looked similar to an earlier in the wild vulnerability analyzed by Ian Beer of Google Project Zero. Beer was able to quickly recognize this exploit as a variant of an earlier port type confusion vulnerability he analyzed in the XNU kernel. That's the one that we just looked at. Furthermore, it seems this exact exploit was presented by Pangu Lab in a public talk at ZeroCon 2021 in April of 2021 and the Mobile Security Conference in July of 2021. So these are references 5 for the ZeroCon and 7 for the MoSec. So let's see what's up with this vulnerability. From the MoSec presentation, they basically said, you know, they went through a different, a bunch of different permutations trying to, when they were analyzing the initial vulnerability previously, they made a bunch of permutations trying to figure out how to trigger it. And one of the permutations actually led to a completely different control flow path. So this send function, you'll have to go back and, you know, we're not going to get into this as uh, deeply as we did the previous one. So you'll have to go back and uh, look at their slides. Send is just a local function that is wrapping around mock send that they had found in a example unit test from the XNU kernel. So this is just going to be the mock message send that causes the linkage the same as the previous example. But this right here is now a mock message send that's going to send them down a different control flow path that's also going to cause type confusion without the need to invoke host request notification. So that's what makes this a different variant. So again, the previous one called mock message to send a special reply port to a destination and that caused the linkage. Then they called host request notification to confuse and then they called mock message receive to use the confused data. The difference here is mock message to link, but now mock message to send the special reply port to itself with itself as the reply port, so sort of a weird usage case there, and that would lead to confusion. And because back here the actual fix for this vulnerability was placed into host request notification, if you're doing this control flow path instead, that means that that fix has no bearing on this vulnerability. So you can still cause the confusion and you'll still have this variant work. And like the previous one, they use the mock message receive in order to use the confused data. Now, the reason that I didn't have this as a find the flaw example is because, as they say right here, this send is very complicated and I wasn't really confident that people would be able to find it. So, you know, if you think you could find it, then go ahead and stop and pause right now and, you know, go look at the version numbers that I have on the website and you can see if you can find it too. But for everyone else, let's continue. So the first thing is that this, this send is using the mock message type move receive and that will lead down this control flow path and the important part that they call out is that they want to make sure that it sets this IP temp owner equal to one. That's going to matter later on for a different control flow path. Then this will cause, because they had this special reply port and they send it to itself using itself as a reply port, that's going to eventually lead to a circularity check. So they want to make sure that it's something is not referring to itself. And it says if this was mock message type port receive and the IP port check circularity returns true, meaning that this is a circular port, you know, pointing at itself, then it's going to set this bit circular and later on we'll do something with that. And what it's going to do with that is it's going to destroy it. So later on down this control flow path, if the mock message header bit circular is set, then it calls IPC K message destroy. IPC K message destroy will go down this long path and eventually find itself at IPC port destroy. Inside of IPC port destroy, if that IP temp owner is not equal to zero, which we saw was set earlier, then it pulls out is port IP imp task, and IP imp task is one of those defines where they're actually pulling something from the K data field of the port, the special reply port here. So they're pulling from the K data field the IP import task, but because this is a special reply port, it's actually holding a sync inheritor port link pointing at a destination port. So this code for destruction assumes that because this is set, that this field must be a IP importance task. 
pulls it out, puts in release importance task, right? Because it assumes that this is that particular type of data being pointed to and now it needs to go release and free that. And then it takes it and it passes it into IP importance task release. This thing right here, which it thinks is an importance task, but which is actually a pointer to a destination port. And this is fundamentally where the confusion is happening. So right here, it thinks that it's one thing, but it's actually another thing. It's pointing at a completely different type of data. All right, and so now what's gonna happen is inside of that function, it's going to say, oh, well, I've got a pointer to an IPC importance task, which we know is actually a pointer to a port. And it's going to pass it into some of this reference counter handling to you know, increment the reference counter, but then release it. Uh, and that is going to be confused because the IP importance task has this definition and a destination port has this definition. And so what's going on here is that when it's decrementing reference counter bits, what's ultimately happening is it's decrementing the IO bits of this destination port. And that is an extremely bad thing because those IO bits are how the object knows what that K object union element is if something is interpreted as a K object instead of interpreted as a special reply port. So again, we had all sorts of different interpretations right here of K objects. And if now all of a sudden you can like take the IO bits and start decrementing them, then all of a sudden you can just start moving through types. You can be changing what the code thinks that K data union is pointing at according to these bits. The bits say the type, and so the code has no choice but to trust the bits. But now all of a sudden these things are just attacker controlled, decrementable, and so they can just completely change out the types of objects as far as the code is concerned. And that is a very strong primitive. So then when we go back to the description, it says, in exploiting this port type confusion vulnerability, the exploit authors were able to change the mock port type from something called a named entry to something called a host security port, and that allowed them to forge their own security token, an audit token, and IO kernel object type host privilege, enabling them to spoof messages to kunctd. So if you read 7, you'll see that actually tricking kunctd was specifically something that they called out, right? So they basically said it's a, you know, user space service that handles mock messages uh, for privileged things. So we don't really care, but they made a proof of concept in their talk to launch a terminalized route. And so basically the real attackers used this as inspiration and that's exactly what they did. So what did they say that the fix was for this vulnerability? Well, what's interesting here is they said that the fix occurred in macOS 11.2 and they said the fix was adding some new checks for special reply ports in, for instance, IPC write copy in, IPC port destroy and mock port request notification so that now you can't send a special reply port with mock message type move receive. So they said that this was fixed in macOS 11.2, but macOS 11.2 was released in January of 2021, whereas the vulnerability was found in the wild in August. So something's weird with the timeline here. So either if this you know vulnerability that Google found is supposed to be the same thing as was presented in 7, then either A, the fix that they presented in April of 2021 regarding the January 2021 update of macOS 11.2 isn't actually the fix, or what was found in the wild isn't actually the same as the presentation, and it was a variant of their variant of this thing. So I asked the authors of these papers, and what was the result? Drum roll, please. The answer is, it was neither. It was option C. It turns out that this vulnerability was fixed in the latest iOS and macOS updates in January of 2021. So that was macOS 11.2 at the time. It was fixed in the latest, but it was not backported to the older, but still supported macOS 10.15. So when I reread 6, it did actually say that the exploit didn't work on macOS 11.4, but it did work on 10.15, which is where they actually caught it in the first place. So thanks to the author for providing this clarification about what happened. And this means that the vulnerability was actually an end day, not a zero day in the wild. So an end day, remember, is something where the vulnerability is known and the exploit is caught in the wild 
after the vulnerability has actually already been publicly disclosed. And I believe this is my first opportunity to finally use the end day sun. I'm going to call it the noon day sun instead of the zero day moon. So the authors said that, you know, the fundamental fix here was, you know, that ad for checks for the uh, special reply port to make sure you couldn't send the uh, particular mock message move or whatever it was. And that fixed the sort of root cause that led to the ultimate vulnerabilities.